students, welcome to the lecture on computer fundamentals. And after the lecture, we will be able to learn the following objectives. Explain the concept of a computer. Understand the basic organization and functional units of computer. Discuss the conversion between different number systems. Explain the integer and floating number representation. Describe the language translator. Let's start with a brief introduction of computer fundamentals. The term computer is derived from the word compute. The word compute means to calculate. A computer is an electronic machine that accepts data from the user, processes the data by performing calculations and operations on it, and generates the desired output results. Computers range from the very small to the very large. Some are capable of doing millions of calculations in a single second, while others may take long periods of time to do even the most simple calculations. But, theoretically, anything one computer is capable of doing, another will also be able to do. Introduction of Computer Let's first talk about the computer. A computer is an electronic device that can perform activities that involve mathematical, logical, and graphical manipulations. Generally, the term is used to describe a collection of devices that function together as a system. Some basic terms used in computer are data. It is the collection of raw facts, figures, and symbols. For example, names of students and their marks in different subjects listed in random order. Information. It is the data that is processed and presented in an organized manner. Program. Set of instructions that enables a computer to perform a given task. Advantages of computers. High speed. Computers have the ability to perform routine tasks at a greater speed than human beings. Accuracy. Computers are used to perform tasks in a way that ensures accuracy. Storage. Computers can store a large amount of information. Any item of data or any instruction stored in the memory can be retrieved by the computer at lightning speeds. Automation. Computers can be instructed to perform complex tasks automatically. Diligence. Computers can perform the same task repeatedly and with the same accuracy without getting tired. Versatility. Computers are flexible to perform both simple and complex tasks. Cost effectiveness. Computers reduce the amount of paperwork and human effort, thereby reducing costs. Limitations of computers. Computers need clear and complete instructions. Computers cannot think. Computers cannot learn by experience. History and generation of computer. First generation, 1940 to 1956. First generation computers relied on machine language to perform operations, and they could only solve one problem at a time. Input was based on punched cards and paper tape and output was displayed on printouts. The Univac and Anyvac computers are examples of first generation computing devices. Second generation, 1956 to 1963, transistors. 
Transistors replaced vacuum tubes and ushered in the second generation of computers. The transistor was invented in 1947, but did not see widespread use in computers until the late 50s. The transistor was far superior to the vacuum tube, allowing computers to become smaller, faster, cheaper, more energy efficient, and more reliable than their first generation predecessors. Third generation, 1964 to 1971, integrated circuits. The development of the integrated circuit was the hallmark of the third generation of computers. Transistors were miniaturized and placed on silicone chips called semiconductors, which drastically increased the speed and efficiency of computers. Fourth generation, 1971 to present, microprocessors. The microprocessor brought the fourth generation of computers as thousands of integrated circuits were built onto a single silicon chip. What in the first generation filled an entire room could now fit in the palm of the hand. The Intel 4004 chip developed in 1971 located all the components of the computer from the central processing unit and memory to input-output controls on a single chip. Fifth generation, present and beyond, artificial intelligence. Fifth generation computing devices based on artificial intelligence are still in development, though there are some applications such as voice recognition that are being used today. The use of parallel processing and superconductors is helping to make artificial intelligence a reality. The goal of fifth generation computing is to develop devices that respond to natural language input and are capable of learning and self-organization. Types of computer. According to the principles of computers, there are three types of computers. One, analog computers. Analog computer is a computing device that works on continuous range of values. The results given by the analog computers will only be approximate since they deal with quantities that vary continuously. It generally deals with physical variables such as voltage, pressure, temperature, and speed, etc. Two, digital computers. A digital computer operates on digital data such as numbers. It uses binary number system in which there are only two digits, zero and one. Three, hybrid computers. A hybrid computer combines the desirable features of analog and digital computers. Types of computers based on configuration. One, supercomputers. When one talks about types of computers, the first type that comes to the mind would be supercomputers. They are the best in terms of processing capacity and also the most expensive ones. Two, mainframe computers. Mainframe computers can also process data at very high speeds, that is hundreds of millions instructions per second. And they are also quite expensive. Normally they are used in banking, airlines and railways, etc. for their applications. Three, mini computers. Mini computers are lower to mainframe computers in terms of speed and storage capacity. They are also less expensive than mainframe computers. Four, microcomputers. The invention of microprocessor, single chip CPU, gave birth to the much cheaper microcomputers. Microcomputers are further classified into one, desktop computers. Desktop computers are also known as personal computers or simply PCs. They are usually easier to use and more affordable. Two, laptop computers. Laptop computers are portable computers. They are lightweight computers with a thin screen. They are also called as notebook computers because of their small size. Three, handheld computers. Handheld computers or personal digital assistants, PDAs, 
are pen based and also battery powered. They are small and can be carried anywhere. Let's discuss about the basic organization and functional units of computer. A computer consists of five functionally independent main parts, input, memory, arithmetic and logic, output, and control units. The computer system consists of three units. One, input device, reads information from input media and enters to the computer in a coded form. The source program, high level languages program, coded information, Simply, data is fed to a computer through input devices. Keyboard is a most common type. Central processing unit. It is the part of the computer that carries out the instructions of a computer program. It is the unit that reads and executes program instructions. Hence, it is known as the brain of the computer. 3. Memory unit. It is also known as the primary storage or main memory. It stores data, program instructions, internal results, and final output temporarily before it is sent to an appropriate output device. It consists of thousands of cells called storage locations. 4. Arithmetic and Logical Unit, ALU. It is the unit where all arithmetic operations and logical functions such as true or false, male or female, are performed. 5. Control unit. It acts as a central nervous system and ensures that the information is stored correctly and the program's instructions are followed in proper sequence as well as the data are selected from the memory as necessary. Five. Output device. It decodes information and presents it to the user. Input devices. 1. Keyboard. Most common and very popular input device is a keyboard. The keyboard helps in inputting the data into the computer. 2. Mouse. Mouse is the most popular pointing device. It is a very famous cursor control device. It is a small palm-sized box with a round ball at its base, which senses the movement of mouse and sends corresponding signals to CPU on pressing the buttons. 3. Joystick. Joystick is also a pointing device, which is used to move cursor position on a monitor screen. It is a stick having a spherical ball at its both lower and upper ends. The lower spherical ball moves in a socket. 4. Light pen. Light pen is a pointing device, which is similar to a pen. It is used to select a displayed menu item or draw pictures on the monitor screen. Trackball. Trackball is an input device that is mostly used in notebook or laptop computer, instead of a mouse. 6. Scanner. Scanner is an input device which works more like a photocopy machine. It is used when some information is available on a paper. 7. Digitizer. Digitizer is an input device which converts analog information into a digital form. Digitizer can convert a signal from the television camera into a series of numbers that could be stored in a computer. 8. Microphone. Microphone is an input device to input sound that is then stored in digital form. The microphone is used for various applications like adding sound to a multimedia presentation or for mixing music. 9. Optical Character Reader, OCR. The OCR is an input device used to read a printed text. OCR scans text optically character by character converts them into a machine-readable code, and stores the text on the system memory. 10. Barcode Readers Barcode Reader is a device used for reading barcoded data. Barcoded data is generally used in labeling goods, numbering the books, etc. Output Devices 1. Monitor 
A monitor is also called Video Display Terminal, VDT. The users can view the visual display of the processed data on the monitor. 2. Printer. Printer is an external hardware device which takes processed data from the computer to generate a hard copy of the same. 3. Speaker. A speaker is a hardware device that is connected to a computer's sound card which outputs the sound generated by the card. Audio data generated by the computer is sent to the audio card that is located in the expansion slot. 4. Plotter. Plotters, like printers, create a hard copy rendition of a digitally rendered design. The design is sent to a plotter through a graphics card and the image is created using a pen. Braille embosser. It is nothing but an impact printer that prints braille output by punching dots on the paper. A few embossers also emboss graphics. Braille reader. Display. Specifically designed for visually impaired, it is an alternative for a monitor. It is connected to a computer via a USB connection. This device displays the output braille characters by raising nylon or metal pins on a flat surface. First we'll have to figure out if a desktop or laptop is going to be best for you. One thing that I'll use in terminology is the system unit. This is the case that contains all of the components needed for your computer to work. The two constructions available to you are the desktop or tower or a laptop. Laptops are for the user who prefer portability. This unit is common for someone like you, a college student, consumers who travel frequently, and business people who find themselves working in places other than their office. The desktop or tower is intended for a user who doesn't need a computer that is portable. They are larger in design and often have more features and computing power. Now that you know for sure what the difference between the two are, which system seems like it would be best for your situation? Let's talk about the details of how computers we're looking at are put together. Many of the components I'll show you will have more than one choice for you. Your budget is going to be what drives many of the decisions that you make. Now the first thing is the motherboard. It's the basis of your computer. It's the first component installed in the system unit and it holds all of the circuitry that ties the functions of the computer components together. You can kind of think of it like your car, which has many computer systems of its own. If you have a frame and tires, you've got a car or you've got a system unit, but it won't take you very far. Now add your engine, the motherboard, where all the systems tie in one way or another and you've got the start of a working vehicle. The motherboard and circuitry need to have power. There is a power box included with your system unit and you'll see a cord coming up the back of your computer for that. The central processing unit, or the brains of the computer, sits on the motherboard and does actually have its own cooling fad. The processors now are so fast they need to be cooled down. All the instructions you give the computer, like a click of a mouse, go through the CPU which processes in billions of cycles per second. Commonly installed processors have quad cores or four separate processors in one component. There are 6-core and 8-core available, and the more advanced the technology, the higher the cost. That's one of the choices you might need to make. Next to the CPU sits the cache, that's C-A-C-H-E, or the temporary memory where things you are working on sit for quick interpretation by the CPU. The RAM chip is also near this location. Random access memory is volatile or temporary memory. Whenever you turn on a program, its instructions are stored in RAM while the machine is on. Once you shut the machine down, both the cache and the RAM are completely cleared out. RAM storage is common at 8, 10, or 12 gigabytes. ROM, or read-only memory, is located here as well. This is a permanent or non-volatile memory. As soon as you turn on your computer, the startup instructions that are stored in ROM begin to execute. Even when you turn it off, the instructions stored in ROM remain. So if you have a machine that's Windows, as soon as you hit the power up button, you'll get a screen, a short screen that might give you a message from the manufacturer. And then in the background, you'll just see black and the Windows logo come through and it'll say starting Windows. What's going on there is your ROM, as soon as you hit the power button, your ROM was kicking in and starting all those instructions for system checks up. The part attached to the motherboard you're most likely to recognize is the hard drive. The hard drive doesn't sit directly on the motherboard but it is connected to circuitry by electrical wire. The hard drive stores software that you've put in there like Firefox, WordPad, or a music player. 
It also stores the data files those programs have created and used. Hard drive storage commonly begins at about at one terabyte now and goes up to two and a half terabytes. So we'll take a peek at the video card or the graphics card. This card is used to process images so you can see them on your computer. As a standard computer user, the video card included with the system you're looking at will suffice. If you're a gamer or really into working with photos or digital art, you may be looking for higher end cards. These cards are more expensive, but typically have their own CPU for better and faster processing of images. Many video cards now allow for more than one monitor to be hooked up to the system. Now, I don't know about you, but I really like that I can listen to music with my computer when I'm working or cleaning the house. The sound card on the motherboard lets us hear from an internal speaker. We can also plug in peripheral devices such as speakers, microphones, or headphones. You should think about where you'll be using your computer. If you're going to end up needing to use headphones most of the time, or speakers that are included with your system, the stock sound card will work just fine for you. If you want something that jams, you may need to upgrade. A part of the system unit that most of us take for granted these days is the wireless local area network card, or the LAN card. This is the card you actually don't see signs of from the outside of your unit, but it is what lets us connect to our wireless internet. Another way to connect to network is by hardware or plugging a jack into the network interface card. This looks like a telephone receptacle, but is slightly larger. Now, we will discuss about the conversion between different number systems. A number system is a systematic way to represent numbers with symbolic characters and uses a base value to conveniently group numbers in compact form. The most common number system is decimal, which has a base value of 10 and a symbolic character set of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Binary and number. The binary number system uses base 2. So the place values of the digits of a binary number correspond to powers of 2. For example, converting a number from binary to decimal is quite easy. All that is required is to find the decimal value of each binary digit position containing a 1 and add them up. Look at the screen to understand the conversion. Octal and hexadecimal numbers. An older computer base system is octal or base 8. One of those numeration systems is called octal because it is a place weighted system with a base of 8. Another system is called hexadecimal because it is a place weighted system with a base of 16. Valid ciphers include the normal decimal symbols 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, plus six alphabetical characters A, B, C, D, E, and F to make a total of 16. B, C, D, A, S, C, I, I, and Unicode. Binary coded decimal B, C, D is also known as packet decimal and is numbers 0 through 9 converted to four-digit binary, ASCII code or codes. Towards the end of the 1950s, the American Standards Association, ASA, began to consider the problem of defining standard character code mapping that could be used to facilitate the representation, storing, and interchanging of textual data between different computers and peripheral devices. Unicode provides a unique number for every character, no matter what the platform, no matter what the program, and no matter what the language. Fundamentally, computers just deal with numbers. They store letters and other characters by assigning a number for each one. Now, we will discuss about integer and floating number representation. Integers are whole numbers or fixed point numbers with the radix point fixed after the least significant bit. They are contrast to real numbers or floating point numbers where the position of the radix point varies. Computers use a fixed number of bits to represent an integer the commonly used bit lengths for integers are 8-bit, 16-bit, 
32 bit or 64 bit. Besides bit lengths, there are some representation schemes for integers. Unsigned integers. It can represent zero and positive integers. Unsigned integers can represent zero and positive integers, but not negative integers. The value of an unsigned integer is interpreted as the magnitude of its underlying binary pattern. Signed integers. Signed integers can represent zero, positive integers, as well as negative integers. The representation schemes are available for signed integers. Sign magnitude representation. One's complement representation. Two's complement representation. Here, we will know about different types of gates and their truth tables. While Boolean algebra is the fundamental formal system for digital circuit designers, digital circuits are their final product. Digital circuits are similar to Boolean block diagrams, but each block is replaced by an easily recognizable graphical symbol called a gate. The basic gate symbols are AND, OR, NOT. The NOT gate is often referred to as an inverter gate. Actually, the inversion is indicated by the little circle on the right-hand end. The triangle on the left-hand side indicates the input and the output. The circle can also be attached to the AND, AND, OR gates to make up two new gates, which are called NAND, not AND, and NOR, not OR. Truth tables. Truth tables are used to show logic gate functions. The NOT gate has only one input, but all the others have two inputs. When constructing a truth table, the binary values 1 and 0 are used. Every possible combination, depending on number of inputs, is produced. Boolean algebra. As well as the logic symbols 0 and 1 being used to represent a digital input or output, one can also use them as constants for a permanently open or closed circuit or contact respectively. Software is the collection of computer programs, procedures, and documentation that performs different tasks on a computer system. 1. Programming software. This is one of the most commonly known and popularly used forms of computer software. These softwares come in forms of tools that assist a programmer in writing computer programs. 2. System software. It helps in running the computer hardware and the computer system. System software is a collection of operating systems, device drivers, servers, windowing systems, and utilities. 3. Application software. It enables the end users to accomplish certain specific tasks. Business software, databases, and educational software are some forms of application software. 4. Inventory management software. This type of software helps an organization in tracking its goods and materials on the basis of quality. Warehouse inventory management functions encompass the internal warehouse movements and storage. 5. Utility software also known as service routine. Utility software helps in the management of computer hardware and application software. It performs a small range of tasks. Now, we will discuss about the types of languages. There are many languages used in a computer development. HTML. The HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. 
It is the core language of the World Wide Web, WWW, that is used to define the structure and layout of web pages by using various tags and attributes, XML. The XML stands for Extensible Markup Language, a language developed by the W3C which works like HTML, but unlike HTML, allows for custom tags that are defined by programmers. Java Script, a language developed by Netscape used to provide dynamic and interactive content on web pages. With JavaScript, it is possible to communicate with HTML, create animations, create calculators, validate forms, and more. VBScript. The VBScript stands for Visual Basic Scripting Edition, a language developed by Microsoft that works only in Microsoft's Internet Explorer web browser and web browsers based on the Internet Explorer engine such as Flash Peaks Slim Browser. VBS script can be used to print dates, make calculations, interact with the user, and more. PHP. The PHP stands for Hypertext Preprocessor, a powerful language used for many tasks such as data encryption, database access, and form validation. PHP was originally created in 1994 by Rasmus Lerdorf. Java, a powerful and flexible language created by Sun Microsystems that can be used to create applets that run inside web pages as well as software applications. Things one can do with Java include interacting with the user, creating graphical programs, reading from files, and more. C. An advanced programming language used for software application development. Originally developed by Dennis Ritchie at Bell Labs in the 1970s, and designed to be a systems programming language, but since then has proven it to be able to be used for various software applications, such as business programs, engineering programs, and even games. C++. It is a descendant of the C language. The difference between the two languages is that C++ is object-oriented. C++ was developed by Bjarne Straustrup at Bell Labs and is a very popular language for graphical applications. Now, in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. The first computers used vacuum tubes for circuitry and magnetic drums for memory and were often enormous taking up entire rooms. Analog computer is a computing device that works on continuous range of values. The results given by the analog computers will only be approximate since they deal with quantities that vary continuously. A hybrid computer combines the desirable features of analog and digital computers. It is mostly used for automatic operations of complicated physical processes and machines. Mainframe computers can also process data at very high speeds. Example, hundreds of millions instructions per second, and they are also quite expensive. Computers accept coded information through input units which read data. The well-known input device is the keyboard.